everyone, and welcome to Lepton Photon. So before I hand over uh, for the official opening of the conference, uh, let me say a few words of housekeeping. And this is as far as we got uh, towards the lecture theatre, and then we, we had to stop there. So in, in the absence of that, uh, let me remind you that the nearest emergency exit may be behind you, but you know that best. Um, let me run you briefly through the scientific program. Um, we have uh, a program roughly uh, between 8 and, and uh, in the morning and 7 p.m. Uh, in, in the UK. Uh, the, the times vary uh, a little bit uh, from, from day to day, depending on, on what sessions are on. We've got uh, plenaries um, on, on all of the days with uh, 49 uh, talks in total. Um, got some poster uh, prizes to give out. Uh, they, they will be presented on Friday. Uh, and that also includes one uh, panel discussion on EDI matters on Wednesday afternoon. Got uh, two half day parallels uh, tomorrow afternoon and Wednesday morning with a total of 110 talks and two poster sessions, one this afternoon and uh, another one tomorrow morning uh, with a total of 85 uh, posters. Um, conference photos um, are obligatory. And uh, we will take these at the end of, of several sessions to, to capture uh, as many as possible of the people uh, attending. And, and, and we'll give a first go at that uh, at, at the end of this session. Um, a few words on the poster sessions. So these are uh, the, the posters themselves are on Indico. Uh, and then we've asked the presenters to, to provide Zoom rooms that you can connect to and, and, and discuss the posters with them during those uh, two one hour sessions. Not everyone will be available during both sessions. Um, and presenters were also asked to, to provide a, a short uh, video explaining their posters that you can uh, watch uh, in, in advance where, whenever is, is most convenient for you. And uh, we will circulate the relevant links with overviews of who's available when and so on uh, in, in, in the course of this morning as this uh, uh, information uh, only uh, became available um, very recently for, for, for some of the posters. I mentioned already there will be poster prizes and uh, you all get a vote in this. So uh, please join these sessions, uh, discuss and, and vote for the, for the best poster. In general, uh, discussions um, can happen, uh, of course, uh, during the sessions. Um, the main uh, platform for discussions uh, uh, will be will be Mattermost, um, and uh, you uh, will have received already an invite link. Please follow that to join uh, uh, Mattermost. This is also on the uh, on the Indico page uh, where you find all the Zoom details and so on. Please keep in mind you have to be logged in and registered. Uh, to access that that page on Indico, um, and the the link to uh, join Mattermost uh, should also appear uh, in in the chat shortly. Um, there there are there are specific channels I should point out for for uh, the different tracks uh, to to uh, keep things a little bit organised. So uh, please uh, uh, watch out for these uh, and and join them. Um, there there's there's a message in the in in, in the general channel. Uh, uh, listing these, and, and, and these are also listed uh, on, on Indico. Um, one word briefly on the proceedings that will be published uh, via Zenodo, uh, and, and we'll use the slides or posters as, uh, as a baseline. You're welcome to provide also written contributions, and, and we'll circulate more details on that uh, later in the week. And finally, um, a word on the uh, general conduct during the conference. Um, I would remind you that we do have, uh, of course, a, a code of conduct. The, the key message is uh, uh, really here um, uh, to, to stay professional, stay respectful towards each other. Uh, uh, harassment in any uh, way, shape or form will not be tolerated. And if there are issues, um, the uh, contacts are either myself or the head of department and, and you can reach both of us and no one else uh, uh, through this uh, email address here or contact us by whatever other means uh, uh, you, uh, you, you may have. Um, then in, in terms of uh, general Zoom, uh, uh, advice, in any uh, way, shape, or form will not be tolerated. And if there are issues, um, there we go. Um, 
we have the, the raise hand function uh, for, for discussion, so please use that, which you should find uh, at this button. The language may differ depending on, on, on where you're connecting from, um, but please use that to indicate that you want to participate in the, in the discussions. Um, I should note that chairs may not ask people in the order uh, in, in which you raised uh, your, your hand, so um, please uh, uh respect that uh, and, and and wait to be invited to speak by the by, by the chair um we also have live captioning available for the plenary sessions uh which uh, will be available uh through uh through this button here so if if you want to make use of that uh, you're very welcome um uh, and and then just uh, just click there uh i should also point out the speakers have limited time of course and uh, we ask them to, to select uh, uh, the topics uh, of, of uh, uh, most interest. Um, and of course, that, that is a selection that is up to the speaker. And uh, we, we wanted rather to have um, discussions of, of uh, uh, their, their selected topics in, in some depth rather than being trying to be absolutely exhaustive. So there will be gaps in the program. Um, uh, don't hold it against the speaker, and if you, if you want to point out uh, uh, additional uh, uh, things uh, that are worth mentioning, then then of course please uh, feel free to do so. And uh, that's the end uh, from me. And with that, uh, I will now hand over for the uh, official opening to the vice president and dean of the Faculty of Science and Engineering, uh, Martin Schroeder. Thank you very much, Marco. Uh, welcome, everybody. Welcome to the 30th Symposium for Lepton uh, Photon Interactions at High Energies. This is Lepton Photon, of course. Uh, thank you, Marco uh, and colleagues, uh, for the opportunity to say a few things on behalf of the university. Um, I'm Martin Schroeder. I'm a professor of materials chemistry, so not, not so far from particle physics, perhaps. Um, and this, this conference is held every other year, normally in odd years. So this conference was due to be in summer 2021. And unfortunately, as, as we all know, COVID has got in the way and also has got in the way for this meeting that was reorganized uh, for, for January 2022. I hope you are all well. Thank you very much for joining us for wherever, wherever you are. Um, we've tried to make the time difference as short as possible, but of course, uh, 24 hours spans the world, so that's not always possible to have convenient times for everybody. So the conference is awarded by the Particles and Fields Panel of IUPAP, the International Union of Pure and Applied Physics, and is the flagship General Particle Physics Conference, alternating with the International Conference of High Energy Physics, taking place in even years. So we're delighted that this is coming to Manchester. Um, the Lepton Photon Conference, this is the first time that it's come to a UK institute, although the fourth conference was in Liverpool, but it was then called Electron Photon. So I guess this is now Lepton Photon. And, and so this is the first time that it's been in the UK. We're expecting something like 500, 550 delegates. And again, thank you all very much for attending and for your support. I know that's very much appreciated. Organizing a conference remotely like this is, is new to all of us. I, I, I chaired a meeting that this summer and it went extremely well uh, remotely. And I'm sure that this meeting will also go extremely well. Thanks should also go to our main sponsors, STFC, IUPAP, as well as the accelerator laboratories around the world, CERN, Fermilab, Keck, DESI, SLAC, and their support allows us to operate this remote conference without a fee. Given that I'm a dean of, of a faculty, I'm very proud of being a dean of a faculty, physics and astronomy is one of our jewels in the crown, as it were. Um, and especially particle physics has a very long and illustrious history going back to Schuster, who coined the term antimatter, and Rutherford, of course, who spit the atom in Manchester. 75 years ago, Rochester and Butler discovered strangeness in cosmic ray experiments. And now, nowadays, the group is one of the UK's largest particle physics groups spanning experiment and theory, and with significant leadership in experiments at the Large Hadron Collider at Fermilab and various other laboratories. 
a few words about Manchester for colleagues who, who know uh, who do not know Manchester particularly well. It's a great shame you're not able to visit us uh, for this meeting. But Manchester is a very large university for, on UK standards. It's 44,000 students now. We've invested enormously on infrastructure and buildings over the past 10 years, including the Schuster Annex, which is in the Department of Physics and Astronomy building, the National Graphene Institute, the Graphene Engineering Innovation Center. And of course, the university emerged in 2004 from a merger of Victoria University of Manchester um, and UMIST, uh, University of Manchester Institute of Science and Technology. So these two universities merged in 2004, and the so-called North Campus that was UMIST, which is close to Piccadilly Station in the, in the center of the city, this is now moving to the Manchester Engineering Campus Development, which is a 500 million pound building development. So we're moving the whole of engineering closer to physics. So the closer to physics you can be, the better as far as I'm concerned. The North Campus will then be redeveloped into so-called Innovation District Manchester, which will be hopefully a hotbed of science, engineering and technology and innovation. Of course, Manchester also has football. We're doing quite well at the moment. The only, there's only one football team in, in Manchester, and that's Manchester City. Um, they're at the moment at the top of the league. Manchester United uh, are struggling a little bit, but of course, Manchester United is not technically in Manchester, it's in Trafford. Uh, and then I bring out my own flag and say the most important thing in Trafford is actually the cricket ground, but that's perhaps uh, uh, a, a, a somewhat mute point. Good luck with the conference. Delighted to, to welcome you here all on behalf of the university and on behalf of the faculty. And I'll hand back to Marco um, to proceed with, with, with the conference. So thank you very much for having me and good luck. Thank you very much, Martin, for those uh, kind words and for opening the conference. And uh, without further ado, I want to hand over to Pippa Wells, uh, who will chair the first science session. Thank you very much, Marco. Thank you, Martin. It's a great shame that we can't all be, or at least some of us can't be there in person. I was very much looking forward to spending a, a, a summer conference in January in Manchester. Uh, so without any more ado, uh, I'd very much like to welcome Emanuela Di Marco to give us an experimental overview of Higgs physics. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, very well. Okay, so I will uh, first share my screen. Okay. Hope that you can see my slides. Yep, that looks good. Okay, so I'm. Uh, I think I want to thank you for uh, giving me the possibility to present the experimental uh, status on X uh, physics on behalf of the Atlas and CMS uh, collaborations. So as uh, uh, most of you should know, uh, the, the X potential appear in the Lagrangian of the standard model uh, here, and uh, it's composed by uh, two terms. So one, which is proportional to phi squared, and uh, uh, which um, is determined by uh, the, the X boson mass, and uh, gives you uh, the, the place of, uh, of the minimum uh, of, the, of the potential of, uh, of the X potential. And then a term, which is proportional to uh, phi to the fourth power, which uh, gives uh, the slope of uh, here of, of the X potential. And uh, it's very important uh, to establish if our universe is stable, if we are here or it is metastable, and so we can tunnel from our minimum in the universe to another global minimum. So it is uh, um, one of the primary goals of the, um, of the LHC to determine the shape of, uh, of this potential. So I go uh, straight to the uh, first part of, the, of this uh, the determination of this potential. So the X mass, the X boson mass and width. So uh, the measurement of the X mass has been done in the um, uh, best resolution uh, uh, channel X to ZZ to four leptons and uh, X to gamma gamma. And uh, as you can see, these are the results on, from, from Atlas and from CMS in these two channels. The, the, uh, two measurements are uh, uh, compatible and they hold uh, uh, a mass of 125 uh, GeV with uh, a precision that uh, uh, now is about uh, 
um, is about uh, uh, one per mil, so it is uh, uh, very remarkable. And uh, now the, um, the precision is determined on 50-50 uh, uh, by uh, statistic, st statistical error and systematic uh, uncertainty from, from the experiments. So uh, now going to the Higgs boson width, this is a, a challenging measurement because the Higgs boson is very narrow. The, the standard model predicts uh, uh, 4 MeV uh, of, of width, uh, and which is uh, too small to be measured directly. So you have uh, one order of magnitude from the experimental resolution, which is about uh, 1 GV from current uh, detectors. So it is very difficult to measure directly from the bright big line shape, but you can uh, use another method because uh, um, the, the X width is related to the ratio of the uh, off shell um, divided by the on shell ratio. So the, the, the ratio of the in, in, within the X peak and in the, in the mass tail with some model assumption, which is that the signal strength on the off shell side is the same as the signal strength in, in, the, in, the, in the peak. And you, as you can see uh, from this Atlas uh, uh, analysis, <clears throat> the, uh, this method is very promising, it hold uh, a limit on, which is uh, uh, 14 uh, MeV using uh, 2015 and 2016 data of, uh, of LHC. And uh, recently CMS has a new uh, uh, analysis uh, combining X2 for lepton and X2 uh, to lepton to neutrinos. Uh, for, for that, uh, that, ho that uh, hold the, the first evidence for, uh, for of Shell X production. You can see that we have now uh, more than three sigma evidence of the of Shell X production. At, and through this, uh, CMS uh, was able to, uh, to give the first measurement of the X width, which is 3.2 MeV, uh, which is compatible with, uh, with, um, with the standard model expectation with, uh, uh, with a precision of about 50%, which is, uh, uh, of course, the most precise measurement uh, up to now. So connected to the, to the X width, uh, it, it is the, um, uh, the, the, the branching ratio in, of the X to invisible particles like the dark matter candidates. So uh, the analysis target to, to, to that uh, are, are similar to uh, dark matter searches. For example, you look for uh, VBF production of the X uh, with, uh, so you look up, uh, in, in the, uh, in, for, for example, in the missing energy distribution or in invariant mass of the two uh, tagging jets distribution like in this uh, Atlas distribution. And uh, uh, through this uh, both collaboration, <clears throat> we're able to set uh, a, an upper limit on the X to invisible uh, branching ratio um, of uh, 11% or 17% with, with uh, a similar sensitivity between, between the two experiments. So, okay, now I go to, say, to another topic, which are the X boson cross section, which is one of the uh, uh, main program of uh, other CMS uh, collaborations. And given the large, um, uh, the large statistics given by, by the run two uh, of LHC, uh, now uh, both collaborations are performing differential cross-section measurement. And, and in particular, in this so-called simplified template cross-section uh, uh, framework, which means uh, that uh, the, 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 the differential cross-section is split in um, beans, uh, um, which are well connected to region of phase spaces uh, where the uh, theoretical uncertainty are uh, well defined. Uh, for example, it's the scaling in number of jets, the scaling in uh, PT of the X or invariant mass of the two associated jets, for example. And for example, if you split the number of jets, you get uncertainty which are uh, connected to the QCD jet uh, scaling. And uh, for example, if you look at the high PT uh, beams of, of the X, you probe uh, effective field theory operators to look for uh, beyond central model uh, contributions. So this is done first in uh, X to gamma gamma decay mode because uh, this provide high yields and um, uh, good signal over background across the full uh, phase space. And you can see the results from uh, CMS uh, and Atlas. So the, the cross section, the differential cross section are split uh, over um, uh, beans uh, which span in three orders of magnitude and you see uh, clearly the, the, the very good agreement between uh, the, the standard model uh, theory and uh, the, the measurements. And in particular, you see that uh, uh, the collaboration are, are now probing differentially um, uh, 
uh, rare uh, decays like the associated TTH production with, uh, with uh, one, one side one sigma band on both sides. So, and you can see that overall the, the agreement with the standard model is given by uh, these uh, uh, p values, which are uh, which seem, which uh, gives you the idea of the remarkable agreement with the, with the standard model theory. Of course, this can be done also in the pure, purest channel x to z z to four leptons, even if the, uh, the, the, the branch ratio is smaller. So uh, you play the same game, but uh, uh, merging some of these uh, um, uh, beans. Uh, it, also here, you see the, the, the good agreement between uh, the, the, the standard model and the, and the measurements. And you see, start to see that, <clears throat> that uh, the collaboration are probing, even in this low yield channel, uh, the, the gluon fusion production, for example, up to a PT of the X, uh, about 100, 100 GB. And you see even better uh, here from this uh, new um, combination from, from Atlas uh, done for this conference, uh, the combination between gamma gamma and four lepton channel. So this uh, is uh, the, the, the real um, uh, differential cross-section measurement. You see uh, this uh, spectacular uh, um, uh, agreement in, in the prediction, in, for example, in PT of the X or in the number of associated jets. So you see that the, the, there is a... Uh, the, the measurement is sensitive up to uh, PT of the X of uh, beyond 200 uh, GB. And you also see uh, inclusively that uh, we, you see a new point at, uh, of the inclusive cross section at 13 TV, which, is, uh, um, which comes very, very close to the standard model prediction. So this is uh, uh, very nice. Of, of course, this can be done also uh, in, for the third generation uh, the decay into the third generation uh, uh, lepton, like uh, X to Tau Tau, you see uh, from the mass distribution, for example, uh, the contribution of the X here. And this channel complements gamma gamma and four lepton in the regions uh, for uh, in the extreme uh, phase space region, like uh, IPT of the X or in VBF, for example, uh, at high imbrant mass of the, of the two jets. You can see, for example, uh, these uh, uh, beans here or, and these beans uh, here in the in the Atlas uh, measurements. And this, uh, as you have seen before, uh, is, uh, uh, is complementary to, to, uh, to the gamma gamma and four lepton channels. And of course, uh, uh, you can do also in the agar branch ratio mode, the X to BB bar uh, with associated production that helps to uh, clean up the, 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 uh, the measurement because these measurement look for uh, two, two uh, B jets. And you see that uh, for high uh, boost of, of the X, uh, you start to see, uh, you, you see uh, the contribution of the X and this done differentially in PT of the X. And uh, you see here the first differential uh, measurements in, in as a function of PT of the X here from CMS and here uh, the same for, for Atlas uh, for the uh, WH or ZH associated production. And you can see that the inclusive measurement of uh, um, for, for this mode agree with, uh, very well with the, with the standard model with an uncertainty which is uh, uh, about uh, 20%. So these uh, channels uh, start to be uh, systematically limited uh, in, um, in the inclusive measurements, but uh, you, you, you can use it for differential measurements. Now, if you go to the second generation, uh, the, uh, the, the branch ratio, of course, uh, be becomes uh, uh, much, much smaller. For example, uh, the X uh, decay to uh, two muons uh, is about 10 to the minus four. And uh, the measurement, uh, uh, the channel is very clean, but uh, you have, uh, because you look for the, uh, the, the, the resonance of uh, two muons, but uh, you, you, you have a large uh, background uh, um, from the uh, Drelian to mu mu production. So the off shell production of, of the Z basically. But you see that, <clears throat> Thanks to the smartness of the experimentalists, uh, which um, uh, were able to uh, maximize, the, the, uh, minimize the, the, the resolution of the peak and uh, to categorize the events uh, uh, in a smart way, in, in dividing by production and other categories, uh, we were able to, uh, both in other and CMS, you start to see uh, the peak in the invariant mass of the tumions. Uh, where you expect from, from the X boson. So both the collaboration uh, measured a, a, a mu value uh, agree, agreeing with, uh, with, uh, with expectation uh, uh, reaching a significance of, uh, of three sigma. So the first evidence for, uh, for CMS. 
And uh, you can see that through these, uh, we are able to uh, place a new point in this uh, um, uh, line of the couplings of the X boson with the different uh, particles. And the muon is down uh, here. So this uh, settled very nice with the, with the expectation. And maybe we'll, in LSC, we will, we will never be able to uh, see the X to, to electron uh, coupling, but there is another point that, uh, that we can probably go into measure, which is the uh, coupling to the charm uh, quark. And indeed, uh, th there are dedicated analysis for X to uh, CC bar. This is a very challenging channel because uh, you have SBB bar background from multi-jets. And the C tagging of the jets is central to discriminate against the, um, the, the, the genetic jets and also from uh, the, the resonant background from X to BB bar. So you see here the result from, from Atlas. So in this uh, invariant mass plot of uh, uh, C tagged uh, the, the jet, you can see uh, clearly the evidence of uh, uh, at uh, uh, 3.8 sigma for uh, VW uh, with a W going to uh, CQ um, here, uh, which is uh, a proxy if you want for the final measurement of the X to CC bar. And the X to CC bar is this red uh, here uh, contribution. You cannot still uh, see it. And so we, we are um, far from it, but. Uh, uh, which are so the, the, the mu uh, measured the, the limit on the, on the mu from this channel is uh, 26 times the, the expected uh, cross section from the standard model. But you can see that the analysis are developing. So the, also this channel is in the, in the target for the, for the future. So going to low, uh, low yield channels, there is also uh, the X boson decay into Z gamma. So the other three uh, di boson decay modes were measured since the beginning of row one. So WW, ZZ, and gamma gamma. The differential ratio of this is like X to four leptons, if you consider also the branching ratio to, to four leptons, but the background is much larger. So it is uh, more difficult um, than, than the other. And it is important because tr through SU2 uh, symmetry, you, you can correlate the decays to the, to the, to the other uh, vector boson uh, decays. And you see that <clears throat> even if the branch ratio is very small, uh, both the collaboration uh, start to see uh, the, the, the appearing of, of the signal, not yet uh, an evidence from the single experiment, but uh, I think that we are uh, close to, to that. And uh, going uh, towards uh, low um, branch ratio modes, there is a new analysis from CMS uh, looking for X boson decays to J psi, J psi, Z, J psi, or U psi, or U psi. These are branch ratio which are tiny, so 10 to the minus 6 or lower, but could be enhanced by uh, loop induced diagrams like, like this. Okay, so the analysis was uh, performed. We are very, very far, uh, for example, X to Z, J psi from the standard model expectation. But it is, uh, if you want, uh, a first step uh, in, in this path uh, towards the, the low uh, branch ratio modes. So this brings me to the, another topic, which is the study of the CP structure of the X and the anomalous uh, couplings. So this has been studied in round one, uh, for example, with the X to VV uh, decays uh, to, to discriminate between spin one and spin two hypothesis. But now with the full round two, we are studying with a vast program of measurements, the full CP structure. So both in the decay of X to VV, but also in production because the same coupling it is in the, in the production VV, for example, in VBF, VV to X, or in the decay again, but with the associated production like TTH with the H going to VV. So you have the amplitude of an X going to, to vector boson, you have the standard model contribution, you have the anomalous contributions, for example, uh, a contribution from uh, CP even anomalous coupling or uh, CP odd anomalous coupling. And this can be done in different ways. For example, uh, as, it, uh, as it is done in Atlas, uh, you can uh, reinterpret in the effective field theory um, the, the, the results on the simplified template cross sections, for example, and uh, put, uh, so for example, uh, you take uh, the result of uh, one bin of this uh, differential cross section, for example, in VBF, and you um, uh, cast in a constraint on the Wilson coefficient uh, of uh, a Nagel order operator in uh, this effective field theory. And, you, and you, you get, for example, a limit in this, uh, for example, CHW parameter. And you do one by one for uh, several parameters and you get uh, 
um, constraint like, like this for CP and Wilson coefficient or, or CP odd um, operators. And you see that <clears throat> with different precision, all these align around zero, which means uh, no anomalous uh, contribution. But of course, here the, the, the statistics will play a, a larger role for, because, for example, x to zz is still limited by, uh, by, the, by the statistical uncertainty. Or you can do the same uh, thing with uh, in CMS with a slightly different approach where uh, you, you try to fit uh, directly um, uh, many independent uh, anomalous coupling parameters, like for example, uh, the, the effective fractional um, CP odd contribution, like uh, this, this is called FA3 in, uh, in CMS. You can do, for example, in uh, X to four leptons, uh, uh, which has uh, the, the full uh, kinematic uh, information, uh, but uh, also the other channel like uh, 12 to new, the same uh, data that were used to, to measure the X width can help a lot uh, with the off-shell uh, contribution. You see that you go from this constraint from uh, four lepton only to, to this. So you get zero, which means a standard model, but the, <clears throat> the uncertainty can be shrinked uh, a lot. And you can do also the same, not only with, uh, with um, X to, to vector bosons, but also with X to fermion uh, coupling. For example, you, the amplitude can be written as uh, uh, the contribution for, for, from a scalar and the contribution from a pseudo scalar with a mixing phase phi CP. Uh, and you can do, for example, in associated production like TTH, you can see here a clear peak of TTH with X to gamma gamma in Atlas and then you take a channel like this, or uh, uh, for example, uh, X to Tau Tau, which has uh, or, uh, the, the, the same kind of, of couplings. And uh, you can uh, combine them, uh, for example, and, uh, and make a constraint on the fraction of CP odd contribution, like uh, it was done before, for, uh, for example, for FA3, and you get something like the light that goes uh, at zero, which means, again, standard model. But uh, you, you start to get uh, uh, some, uh, some constraint on the, on also on this type of, uh, of couplings. And you can see that you can interpret these in terms of the, uh, the Kappa framework uh, uh, on, in terms of the um, coupling with the, with the, with the, with the scalar, Kappa top uh, with, with the scalar or with the pseudo scalar. And you can see from that Atlas CMS have the same, uh, similar, <clears throat> Sensitivity, the, the standard model, the, the measurement sits uh, close to the, to the standard model one, and you can also, you are also able to, um, to discriminate against the, uh, the, the wrong phase, let, let's say. So uh, this can be done also in X to Tau Tau, where these, uh, the same uh, mixing angle phi CP can be determined by the, um, the, the angle between the, of the planes, the decay planes of the two taus. And uh, for example, CMS defined the decay plane of the tau depending on, on the, decay, the decay mode of, of the tau. And what uh, you have to do is to uh, measure the distribution of this uh, uh, phi CP, which is, uh, uh, like this for CP even or, or like this for CP odd, you can do in a smart way pinning in, uh, for example, in the M MDA in categories which have different uh, signal to background ratio, as you, you can see here. And you weight the result, uh, combine all these categories, and you can see vi already visually that uh, uh, you have a good discrimination between uh, the, the, the scalar, so phase, this alpha phase equal to zero, or the pseudo scalar uh, with this phase at uh, 90 degrees. So, in, indeed, the CMS got a discrimination of, of about three sigma uh, for, uh, from this channel only. Okay, so let me swap a little bit topic and go to uh, X boson self coupling. So, after the symmetry breaking, uh, you, you, you get this uh, form of the potential where you have a contribution from the three linear coupling and the contribution from the quartic coupling. And in, in, in LHC, probably we'll have the power to only to, to constrain the, the three linear coupling. And so the, <clears throat> the, the way um, to. Marco, Marco yes. you have about five minutes left, okay? Yeah, yeah, okay, thanks. So uh, LHC, the, the, the production of the X is dominated by the gluon fusion. Uh, the cross-section is a small, 31 femtobar. And this is because you have two uh, modes that contribute. So one which involves the, the three linear coupling, lambda. 
So that you have a virtual H decaying to, to X's. And so you have uh, the coupling to the top and the three linear coupling of the X, but you have also this box diagram where you have only the uh, coupling of the X with the top uh, twice. And these two are uh, interfered dest destructively. And so you have this uh, shape of the cross section where the, <clears throat> the standard model cross section is smaller than if you don't have the three linear coupling at all. And then you have uh, uh, the, so the, the, the final cross section is very small in gluon fusion, but the VBF is even smaller. Uh, but it is still important because uh, uh, it is the only one that can give you access to the HHVB quartic coupling. So the two vector bosons that scatter and gives you the, uh, the two axis. So briefly going to the modes that are sensitive to, to that. So for the, the uh, the most sensitive channel involved BB bar for one X, which also you exploit the large branch fraction. And for example, BB bar gamma gamma. So both the collaboration have sensitivity, which is still uh, far from, uh, from, from, um, from the observation. So are about five or six uh, times the standard model excitation. But thanks to this, uh, um, this uh, shape of the cross section that I was saying before, uh, you get a constraint on the on the trilinear coupling. So uh, this is the what you expect from the theory, and this is the uh, the, the, the observation. So you get uh, you start to get real constraint, and you can also do this in uh, in a two D plane. So in trilinear coupling versus the the coupling of the X to the to the top, like it is done in this uh, in this plot. Uh, of course, you can do the same thing in BB Tau Tau, and uh, um, this result from, uh, from, from Atlas. So you see a similar uh, shape of the, of, for, the, for the observed uh, constraint. And you see that the sensitivity is uh, uh, similar, or even better than the gamma gamma, uh, the gamma gamma channel. And the combination gives you a sensitivity of about 3.1 times the standard model uh, expectation. So uh, we are not very, very far uh, from, uh, from seeing it. And this, uh, uh, much better than what we are expecting, uh, let's say, at the beginning of, of round two. Uh, okay, so the, the largest uh, channel uh, is uh, x to uh, x, x to uh, for, uh, for big quarks. And as I was saying, uh, this is uh, probably, you, you can, the most uh, important one that I want to highlight is, uh, is the VBF channel because of you are, uh, you, you, you can set constraints on this K2V, uh, coupling. So you can see from this one dimensional plot that you are about 1000 less than the standard model expectation for the, stand, for the standard model value. But thanks to this uh, shape of the, uh, of the cross section, the fact that uh, when uh, the kinematic become extreme, like if you look at two boosted uh, X uh, candidates, uh, you have the sum sensitivity. To you, so you start to have some constraint on, on, the, on the K2B. So a, a new result uh, from CMS is, uh, you, uh, is uh, with a channel with, uh, with multi-leptons, uh, uh, so with, with the decay of 4W, 4TOP, uh, top and 2, 2, 2 w to top uh, This is cleaner, of course, uh, the, the, the yield is smaller and the sensitivity so is much smaller than the previous channel, but uh, it is uh, promising uh, for the future because, uh, because you have uh, this channel is uh, very clean uh, experimentally. So you, with the statistics will, will, uh, will, will improve uh, a lot. So briefly on the combination, I want just to remark that inclusively now we are in, uh, we are in the precision, in precision era of the, of the X. So the, the signal strength is measured uh, with uh, an uncertainty of about 6%, which is uh, remarkable. And you can see the results from, for example, uh, in, for the different production modes of, of the X. Uh, which align with, uh, with the standard model expectation. So you see that the, the uncertainty is of 2% uh, or 7% on, on gluon fusion and about 12% uh, for, for, for VBF, for, for example, or the, uh, versus the, the, in the decay okay, of, the, of the X for different modes. And you can also see here now uh, the, the error bar from X to, to mu mu. And you can interpret the results uh, in terms of the kappa framework, for example, uh, for the universal vector boson coupling kappa V versus uh, the, the Fermi universal coupling kappa F, and the, the, the measurement is close to, to two sigma band from the, from the standard model. Or uh, you, can, from, you can combine the, the interpretation of the, the effective field theory here for the Wilson coefficients. 
And this uh, brings me to the conclusions, which is that uh, we have a plethora of, uh, of results from X physics. The, the results are um, remarkable in terms of uh, determination of the X boson mass and width. The, 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 the production cross-section, which are done now differentially uh, in many ways, uh, from, so fully differentially or in this uh, simple template cross-section uh, framework. And uh, we are studying extensively the CP violation structure and, uh, and also the, the, the searches for the double X production is uh, way beyond what we were expecting at the beginning of run two. And I think this is uh, very promising for the start of uh, the LHC this, uh, this spring, where, from which we expect uh, 500 in inverse Ventobar. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, that was a really uh, comprehensive summary of the state of Higgs measurements. So are there, are there questions? You know where to find the raise hand, I'm sure by now. Maybe, oh, there's one question uh, from Mark. Go ahead, Mark. On page two. Yes. Uh, uh, could you or anybody give a few words on uh, the relationship between lambda uh, measured, uh, th that we would measured, and the choice of stability? Thank you. Uh, so, uh, yes, yeah, so this uh, does not depend only on the, on the measurement of, uh, of uh, lambda, but it depends on the... Um, The, the depends on the measurement of the of the lambda of the mu and the top mass. So I don't have here in the uh, in the in this presentation. Unfortunately, the, uh, there is uh, I think an updated uh, two two dimensional plot of uh, uh, x mass versus uh, um, versus uh, top mass, uh, where you can see the. Um, uh, the the intervals for uh, let's say the. the and the, the, the stability and the meta stability of, of, uh, of, uh, of the universe. Uh, so. Okay, um, are there more questions or comments on, on that specific topic? I, I, was, I was curious on, on slide 19. <clears throat> Excuse me. The, yes. the background shape um, for the CMS plot there on, on the left. Uh, it, it looks as though there are some trends at, at the low mass part of the plot. Do you, do you know what's driving that or what kind of cross checks have been done? So, uh, yes, for, so this is uh, um, the, the combination. So this comes from the combination of uh, different categories. Um, so it, this, uh, uh, I think you, you, you mean this trend here in the low in the low mass uh, in the low mass here. So this comes from uh, uh, a few categories which are which are low, low statistics and and um, this has been checked. So the, the, the high uh, statistics one does not does not have uh, this, this trend. Then you have the low statistics uh, channels that have uh, this kind of fluctuation. These are, are still visible in the combined plot because this is a, a, a Signal over a uh, signal plus background weighted plot. So they still appear in the combined plot, but uh, I think they are statistical fluctuations of this on this uh, <coughs> uh, I, I guess purity, if you want, uh, categories. Okay, thanks. So in, in normal times, we would have a round of applause at this point and say thank you very much to the speaker. Um, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity for this call. Thank you. So now I'd like to call on the next speaker to talk about um, the theory of Higgs and electroweak physics, which is Ravindran Vajralevu. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, can I share the talk actually? Because yes, I, um, uh, Emmanuel, you'll have to stop sharing. Or can one of the hosts uh, stop the sharing? Thank you. One second, no? I'm just sharing. Thank you. Thank you. 
Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, very clearly. And I see and, uh, you can also see my uh, slide. Mm. Yes, yes. So 14.30. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Marco and uh, the members of the organizing committee for giving me this opportunity to talk about uh, Hicks and Electrovic. Um, okay, let me just, I don't know, the slide is not moving. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. We saw it briefly. Yeah. So one second. No, I'm, I'm just not able to move the slide. Up. Sorry, there is some problem with the moving slide actually. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's going back actually. Mm. Yeah, so uh, this is the plan of my talk. And I'm going to discuss mostly about uh, Exposon, in particular, uh, what are the state of the results that are available in the production channel, and also a little bit about uh, electronic fit, recent electronic fit. fit. And uh, thanks to the discovery of Exposon at the LHC, we have a better understanding of electronic symmetry breaking mechanism that is responsible for providing masses to uh, gauge bosons, particularly Z and W bosons in the electric sector. And uh, we have an opportunity now to test the other two terms actually, particularly phi cube and phi four term, because those are predictions from the first term. If you MH is, is what we have measured in the laboratory, then we can use MH and B and make a prediction for other two terms. In other words, we can actually have a control over the complete potential shape of the potential. And um, so the way the state is about the risk on the production cross sections, in particular, Higgs, includes Higgs predictions for uh, Higgs boson within the standard model, in particular in QCD. It's one of the finest results that is available in theory, um, namely the quaternic cross section is known to unprecedented accuracy uh, uh, in, uh, in third order in petabitic QCD. And the PDFs, uh, even though it's not known to third order in QCD, but it is well understood that up to second order in petabitic QCD, particularly its evolutions and the fittings are done up to next to next to that. This, this slide basically summarizes uh, the state of the art result for the production cross-section up to next third order in perturbation QCD. And you can see how the result changed from going from LO to NLO to NNLO to N cube LO. And the bands basically show, tell you how the theory error uh, decreases as you increase the order of perturbation theory. And this plot basically is with, with respect to several center of mass energies. And uh, here is the plot, here is the summary of uh, various uncertainties after taking into account um, corrections up to third order, including electrophic effects. Okay, you have correct, you know, errors coming from renormalization and factorization scales, missing third order PDF, heavy quark contributions, strong coupling constant at MZ, there are uncertainties coming from these sources. And the table basically summarizes using this, uh, you know, N cube LO uh, inclusive uh, results from this group uh, at various energies. And these are the uh, results that come out after taking into effect uh, these corrections. And delta theory actually uh, sums up most of the things. And uh, the error, as you can see, is about four to minus six percent at various energies. And delta PDF is not too much. However, uh, the uh, you know, uncertainty coming from alpha S is not negligible. And uh, in addition to pure QCD corrections at third order, it's also you know, important to include other corrections, in particular from electronic sector, because the corrections are of same order of magnitude compared to third order effects in QCD. Hence, these things are also now available, particularly mixed electronic corrections at NLO level. Basically, NLO translates to two and three loops, if you take into account top quark effects and not top quark effects in effective theories. 
And these are the numbers. And you can see that the corrections, if you compare it with the pure QCD at a low level, it's about 53 to 5.9%. And here one actually takes into account various, um, uh, um, sorry, this slide is not moving. I don't know why. Uh, okay. Yeah, this summary, this summarizes various contributions. Basically, it is like taking the stock of all the corrections coming from various sources and also various uh, uncertainties uh, after taking into account contributions from various sources. And as you can see, the largest correction is from QCD. And then the next one comes from the electric sector and uh, then from the you know, mass effects and so on and so forth. Okay, and uh, this is also uh, a, a summary of results from the subdominant channel, particularly BB bar. BB bar, of course, is two orders of magnitude smaller than the gluon fusion process. However, it is important in the context of beyond standard model, in particular, two XWM models where this, this kind of contributions can be significant. And the other channel, which is of interest to us, which is you know experimentally clean is a vector boson fusion, a 2x boson production. And it's, it's also, you know, interestingly, the largest cross section at the bond level. It has got non-zero transverse momentum even at tree level, sensitive to charge parity and angular correlation in the standard, non-standard x predictions. And uh, this cross, while cross sections are quite small compared to Luan channel, but it's a clean channel and it's also known to second order in perturbation theory, even with several cuts, which is hard to put in theoretically. And uh, also um, Zurich group had achieved to compute fully differential ones for the vector boson fusion at next to next leading order level. And this is the plot where you can see how uh, PT and rapidity distributions look like after taking into uh, the, the cuts from, you know, so dictated by the experiments and one finds five, five to 7% larger corrections taking into account this. In addition, uh, there are also results for uh, uh, semi-inclusive ones, or not semi-inclusive, I mean, uh, not you know, uh, differential ones, particularly you know, the most important one, namely the rapidity distribution. So rapidity distribution is hard to compute theoretically. However, there are nice techniques available that, uh, using you know, threshold expansions. Now, rapidity distribution provides two scaling variables, x1 and x2, or z1 and z2. By expanding around z equal, zi equal to one, one can actually make uh, you know, significant progress. In fact, N3LO has been achieved by doing this threshold expansion to several orders in these variables. And uh, the final result shows a remarkable uh, improvement in, uh, uh, in, in terms of scale uncertainties. It reduces uh, the, the corrections, you know, reduces scale uncertainty significantly. As you can see from blue band to uh, yellow band or you know um, the, the light uh, red band gives you you know idea about how uh, important these corrections are. In addition to this uh, rapidity distributions, now we have complete uh, you know uh, differential ones, fully differential ones uh, at uh, third order in perturbative QCD. Okay, this uses a completely you know different technique called projection to bond technique. Uh, which is summarized in this equation, how to do this uh, correctly. And that allows us to also take into account several of these experimental cuts like PTs on the photos stick coming from the X boson and also pseudo rapidities. So one can actually play with uh, our expression uh, and uh, take into account all the realistic cuts of, and obtain fiducial cross sections. And this is, uh, the place where you can see how rapidity distribution looks like as, as, a, you know, as a function of YH. And one also has results in the four lepton channels. This is interesting because the experimental results are all, already available. And the, the predictions from this group, Zuri group, uh, Chen et al, have actually made, uh, made a remarkable achievement of comparing their predictions against the experimental results for both from Atlas and CMS, and one finds uh, a, you know, good agreement with theory. Okay, this is all about fixed order uh, uh, predictions uh, from QCD as well as from electrovic sector. 
And uh, one actually cannot, cannot stop at fixed order because there are potential logarithms coming from threshold regions. In particular, gluon fusion process, you know, is sensitive to those threshold logarithms. Hence, one has to classify them and, and take them into account uh, to all orders in perturbation theory because at every order, these large logarithms play uh, in a significant role. Hence, one actually classifies them as SOP plus virtual, which contains distributions, which is in the box. And then the, the other ones, which goes by the name next to SOP plus virtual or next to threshold terms or next to next to threshold terms. So there is this, uh, you know, a nicer way of organizing these terms in uh, perturbative QCD and take them into account in a systematic fashion. And it was pioneered by Stratman, Katani, Trent to do way long ago, how to resum these contributions to all orders in perturbation theory using a Mellon moment techniques. And uh, that has been known for a while. And uh, people have done this exercise for pure threshold contributions. So this blue one that is, you know, vertical one shows how large logarithms can give you order one terms every order in perturbation theory because smallness of the coupling constant and uh, the red one, red band, actually tells you how the next two leading soft terms can also appear, which can spoil the reliability of the fixed order perturbation theory and allowing one to look for resumed expressions. And that has also been done actually in, 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 in perturbative QCD. So both, you know, the state of the art results, both taking into account soft plus virtual as well as next to soft plus virtual terms to all orders in perturbation theory is now available at you know, second order in perturbation theory. And this, uh, uh, you know, uh, slide in the top, you can see that the theoretical uh, expressions that encodes the results to second order in perturbation theory. Okay, the P prime is the alternately Paris splitting function in the large Z lim limit, and Q is the one which uh, takes into account process dependent quantities. These two plots basically tell you how the uh, results uh, improve the dependency on the scale, particularly mu r. And you can see there are several ways you can actually perform these resummations. One goes by the name A soft with uh, G bar not exponentiating and G bar not exponentiating. These are n independent constant terms which can be uh, exponentiated or not exponentiated. And they in, you can see that by taking into account this third order leading log corrections into account, one gets stable prediction. The red one is horizontal, horizontal in, in all senses. Okay, so <clears throat> here is the plot where you can see that similar exercise has been done for the pseudoscalaric predictions. And you can see significant improvement by if you take into account the threshold effects. In addition to this, <clears throat> there are also next to soft plus virtual contributions. And the, those next to soft uh, contributions can also be resumed to all orders in perturbation theory. And the logs can also be organized as a leading log, next to leading log, and next to next to leading log, and so on and so forth. And the table here summarizes how the numbers look like as you add more and more terms in this particular uh, way of uh, summing up. And the plots also show you how it, they, improve, they look like at various center of mass energies. And here is the plot where a similar exercise has been done for the pseudoscalar exposon, where next to next to soft plus virtual terms are taken into account. In summary, we have now both soft plus virtual as well as next to soft plus virtuals to all orders in perturbation theory uh, up to second order in uh, logarithmic accuracy. And uh, for subdominant channels also, there is similar exercise because you have a third order predictions in fixed order computations. So the, this plot basically tells you how these corrections look like in a resummed um, um, you know, scenario. And as, again, you can see that if you increase the uh, logarithmic accuracy in the resummed expressions, you, the error on the predictions go down uh, significantly making this one reliable. A similar exercise can also be done in the case of rapidity distribution. As we saw in the beginning of the talk, that the results are available in the fixed order up to third order in perturbative QCD. And uh, now it's an important task to actually 
to take into account the resumed contributions because again the gluons uh, they actually dominate at threshold regions hence we need to take them into account uh, these corrections into account so again unlike in the case of inclusive ones the resummation uh, is done in uh, a double you know double two dimensional melon space which are denoted by n1 and n2 the scaling variables are xi xi goes to 1 corresponds to n goes to infinity there is a misprint here ni actually goes to infinity not ni goes to 1 sorry about it and that the resummed expression is also available up to second order in leading log approximations okay and this uh, plot summarizes the status of uh, these uh, predictions uh, both uh, from fixed order up to n and elbow level in the left side of the uh, uh, the uh, plot and the right, is, right side of the plot, you see how the result change if we include uh, next to next to uh, uh, leading log and next to uh, leading log and next to next to leading log corrections into account, resumed corrections into account. As you can see, the corrections, um, you know, uh, go up a little bit. However, the the scale and sensitivities do not change much, into, you know, surprisingly. Okay, and uh, this plot. Uh, gives you an idea about uh, the percentage contributions coming from various uh, uh, leading log, next to leading log, next to next leading log contributions to fixed order ones. There's a large corrections at the leading log level and it goes down to 8 to 20 percent if you take into account uh, next to next leading log corrections. And in fact, you know, uh, one finds that uh, uh, there is a significant cancellation between fixed order and uh, leading log approximations. And um, and also by changing the MH value, uh, not MH value, that's the renormalization scale, uh, you know, with the two MH or half MH, uh, you have a different way of argument, you know, taking into account the resumed corrections. Okay, this, uh, this is all about, uh, you know, single X. There are also, you know, two X uh, uh, predictions. The two X predictions, I'm sorry. The two X, two X predictions are also important uh, because uh, they contribute to beyond standard model scenarios and particularly you know, non-resonant predictions and resonant prediction scenarios. And it's also an uh, important process to uh, test phi cube term in, um, um, in, in, in the potential, exponential. Of course, uh, this has been studied uh, very well in the literature. The earliest calculation was by Clover et al. And they found that actually this con this contribution, you know, which is sensitive to the triple X prediction, is actually suppressed by the interference of the box diagram, which is well known. And there are also results at NLO NLO level taking into account QCD effects and also electrophoric effects. And uh, this 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 summarizes, you know, contributions coming from uh, various other channels like you know uh, BB bar and so on and so forth in uh, association with Z and also the NNO corrections to them actually. And uh, since the top core contributions are important in the case of die X prediction, unlike in the single X prediction, the exact top mass corrections are also taken into account by various groups. And uh, this plot summarizes how they change the predictions. In addition, uh, in the effective uh, field theory approach where top core ma uh, decrease of Freedom are integrated out. The full next to next leading order corrections are also available. And this uh, plot actually gives you how the invariant mass distribution distribution of uh, in uh, tie x looks like at, after taking into account. And there is a state of the art results, you know, a couple of years back, namely this entry LO predictions for die x prediction in perturbative QCD, and it, it improves the cross, you know, changes the cross section by 3% uh, and then decreases uncertainty to the level of two to three percent and also PDF uncertainties. Okay, there are also results for uh, bot, you know, a die X prediction in the bottom core annihilation up to next to next leading order level. Okay, and uh, that's all about Higgs. And since I don't have too much time and I will now- uh, you, you have about five minutes. So yeah, I will quickly, you know, summarize uh, <laughs> electrophysics. Uh, physics. Uh, everybody is, uh, you know, convinced that uh, its standard model is extremely successful. However, you know, there are several tests uh, continues because tests are possible because it's a renormalizable theory. 
QCD corrections, no, sorry, quantum corrections provide predictions um, of various quantities that can be tested against uh, theoretical, you know, by experimental results and uh, can put, you know, standard model in a very strong footing. Of course, you know, it has several parameters. You can choose some of them as input parameters, some of them are output parameters, okay, and make a best fit out of it, actually. In fact, such a exercise in the past provided hints for, you know, where the top could lie, um, you know, at Tevetron, as well as, you know, Higgs at uh, both the Tevetron and uh, LHC, and it provided uh, you know, uh, uh, clues that, you know, help us ex experimentalists to actually um, discover them both at Tevetron as well as at uh, LHC uh, of top and Higgs respectively. Okay. And uh, in fact, the standard um, um, approach is to actually take these three couplings as input and, uh, and, and the two masses as uh, input parameters. And then you can make predictions for Ws mass and mixing angles and vector actual vector couplings after taking into account state of the art uh, uh, like a, a QCD or QED as well as electrophoric corrections into account. Particularly if you look at MW, the delta R actually captures all the radiative corrections and K kappa Z ca captures all the radiative corrections for the sine square theta W and rho Z, the form factors actually captures the radiative corrections coming from various um, QCD and electrophoric correct electrophoric effects. Okay, so this actually summarizes how the corrections look like, and there are there are in particular for W boson you have um, results up to third order, and one can actually nicely fit into a simple looking formula and make a best fit out of it. Actually, similarly for sine square theta W, we have actually form factors available computed to uh, even to uh, second order in perturbative QCD, and then there are fits to that actually. Similarly for ZD case, the radiative functions are available to very un unprecedented accuracy like alpha S power four and second order in mixed QCD, QED or mixed Q uh, QCD electrophoric theory. And, and you can see that in numbers, how they look like a gamma Z hadron in QCD up to four loop order, you know, alpha four level, it is available actually. Okay, similarly with the evolution of the coupling constant also, are available to very unprecedented accuracy up to alpha s power six for the QCD and alpha hydronic up to fifth order and taking into account even top quark effects. So this, uh, you know, this work by Erler and Scott, um, they using G figure, they made a, a, a nice um, best fit uh, um, with all the data that are available, uh, taking into account both with MH and without MH, and this table summarizes how the numbers look like. When these numbers are obtained, the input parameter along the horizontal line is not considered. So this, this is the best fit using the G fitter by Erler and Scott. You can see that how the numbers uh, compare against uh, the measurements. So, and there are also other approaches and uh, different approach is followed in the case of standard model effective field theory, because you know MW poses problem because they appear in propagators and then uh, it uh, gives uh, numerical instabilities. So the uh, this is, this standard model effective field theory uh, community, they use a different kind of input parameters. They uh, remove one of the standard ones and replace it with MW as an input parameter you can use alpha mz mw as an input parameters or gf mz mw as an input. So uh, one can actually go on like this uh, and uh, make a uh, standard model um, is, is the best one, you know, um, put, put it in a very strong um, theoretical stand as well as experimentally it's tested. Summarizing, um, we have state of the art results uh, in particular in QCD for uh, uh, for the Higgs boson production, inclusive level, differential level, and also at, at, at the prediction level. And we have these results and predictions for both scalar as well as pseudo-scalar Higgs bosons. And we also have results taking into account electrophoric effects because they cannot be ignored if you take into account third order corrections in QCD. So the, those results are also, they are competitive with third order correct, 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 corrections, QCD corrections. So the, the, the results are also available. 
similarly you know uh, gluon flux you know is quite uh, imp, uh, uh, quite large at uh, threshold regions so one uh, has to you know include uh, threshold effects and threshold effects cannot be added you know as a fixed order correction they should be added to all orders in perturbation theory and you know and that can be done using a framework called resummation and now the resummation resum results are available to third order in leading logarithm approximations for several of these observables but uh, okay which i discussed you know in inclusive ones and rapidity and uh, and several other ones uh, and similarly i discussed about uh, the results uh, that are available for die x prediction inclusive ones also differential ones and um, and also a little bit about electrophoric pit of an hour is not uh, sufficient to cover uh, these two topics so i i'm sorry if i have not um, you know done a justice to the second part of the talk in uh, electrophoric pit and uh, if i missed any references um, i'm sorry about it thank you for this opportunity thank you very much indeed for bringing us up to speed on where uh, uh, these precision calculations have been improving in, in the recent years. Are there, are there questions? Please raise a hand if you want to ask a question. I, I was wondering, you did have to go very fast on the dihigs. Could you could you put back? I think you had the mass distribution of the Higgs yeah. pair. Is that right? Yeah. This one actually. Uh, no. This one. Uh, I think that, that one was the one I. Yeah, is this okay. the one? Yes, thank you. So I'm just. Uh, so you don't have predictions there for how that would change if you varied lambda to a non-standard value. You just have the. Is that right? Did, did you do you have a plot where you, where you um have the dihigs but with non-standard values of the coupling? Uh, no, I don't have the plot here. I think okay. in principle, you know, uh, since it is done in an effective field theory approach, um, you know, one can actually take into account um, those effects also. Uh, so overall, um, you know, because it, it only changes, um, you know, the, the, you know, the triple licks uh, coupling by uh, scaling parameter. So one can actually trick the uh, you know the theoretical results by just uh, you know scaling the parameters. I think yeah. this is possible actually. Yeah, because I think that's also interesting from the experimental point of view in trying to constrain lambda, not just looking at the overall cross section, obviously, but looking at the this uh, dihigs mass distribution. Yeah. Sure. Are there are there more questions? Okay, if not, let's thank the speaker very much for uh, this uh, really useful contribution. And now we're gonna to move to the last talk of this session, which is an experimental overview of electroweak physics. And I'd like to ask Aldrich Kepka to give this presentation. So we can see the slides, I don't hear you. Okay. Can, can you there hear me? Go. Yeah, there we go, that's very clear. Very good. Good morning, everyone. I'm Aldrich, and I will give a summary of the electric measurements uh, on behalf of uh, Tevatron and LHC experiments. Okay, so the wealth of the uh, LHC data allows us to probe the production of bosons over many orders of magnitudes in cross sections. And today I will talk about the production of single bosons and also the extraction of fundamental parameters like the weak mixing angle, W mass, and branching ratios to leptons of the bosons. I will talk about diboson production, which by now became precision measurements, essentially. And then uh, in the last part of the talk, I will talk about the rarest processes at the LHC, so the electrophoric production of the bosons, the so-called vector boson fusion, vector boson scattering processes, as well as the triboson uh, productions at the LHC. So let's start with the Drelian, which is the most basic process, it's easily experimentally uh, identifiable. And we use it in the performance, uh, just to start with, and where we are actually use, profiting from a very precise measurement of the mass of the Z at lab and calibrating the objects to it. Um, we also use this process to test our theoretical predictions. 
state of the art next to leading order, next to next to leading Q, uh, QCD calculation, etc. Uh, this process has been measured already several times at the LHC. CMS has now put up a new measurement of the transfer, transfers left and pair uh, momentum. Uh, so you see an example here as a function of the transverse mass of the dilepton system. It was measured in the on-shell as well as in the off-shell regions uh, with the mass above 50 GV. It's an inclusive measurement uh, with also a selection of the jets and providing ratios. So it provides a lot of uh, possibility to test uh, theoretical calculations compared to the next to leading order, next to next to leading order um, uh, predictions, but also at low PT, it shows the sensitivity to the soft QCD initial state radiation, and you can see comparison uh, with the predictions that uses the transverse momentum dependent parton showers and unhydronization. Moving to the LHCB, uh, they also measure the Drellian production, and they have a unique phase space because they cover uh, quite different phase space in pseudo rapidity compared to Atlas and CMS. This can be seen on the left plot, uh, which shows the kinematic reach of LHCB. And uh, as you can see, they can access uh, rather low and high X part of uh, the process compared to the Atlas and CMS. So um, uh, in, inclusively, there is quite a good modeling um, in this phase space. Differentially, there are some uh, discrepancies uh, up to a couple of percent seen. And in the future, this, will this measurement will help to constrain low X and high X uh, in the global PDF fits. Now moving to the extraction of the fundamental parameters of the standard model. So the first one is effective weak mixing angle, which determines the strengths of the vector and axial vector couplings of the, of the Z to the fermions. And it also uh, ties uh, the masses of the W and the Z through, the, through this formula. And it is experimentally accessed by measuring the forward backward asymmetry of uh, the lepton that is directly proportional to one of the uh, angular coefficients uh, that appears in the differential cross-section of the Drellian, and uh, especially the A4 coefficient is very sensitive to the sine square uh, theta that can be used to extract the weak mixing angle. There are different approaches by ATLAS and CMS. ATLAS measures the A4 coefficients and then uses the linear dependence of the coefficients on, uh, on the electric mixing angle to extract it. Uh, um, while CMS uses, uh, fits actually the forward backward asymmetry in bins of MLL and um, rapidity uh, using predictions with different sine square theta uh, in the templates. The status of the measurement uh, of the sine square theta is that uh, up to now there has been only there have been only measurements uh, done using run one data. So here is a comparison of the uh, Atlas run one and CMS run one measurement. You can see that this measurement is statistically dominated and also dominated by the PDFs. The Atlas measurement is slightly more precise because an additional category is used uh, with uh, using forward electrons. And if you put this in the big picture, uh, looking at this comparison of the new measurements and also the previous measurements, you can notice that still the most precise measurement of the weak mixing angle comes from Tevatron at Hadron Colliders uh, from the combination of uh, D0 and uh, CDF. So we expect improvement of the measurement of the weak mixing angle using the full run to data still um, uh, to come. Another parameter uh, is the W mass um, measurement. So it's a fundamental parameter and uh, with the radiative corrections, there are co uh, additional contributions from the Higgs and the top, but if there is a BSM physics, it can also receive contributions from the BSM. So it was already uh, mentioned in the previous talk. It's quite interesting to uh, note that uh, when, does, when one does an indirect global fit, the electric um, mass, the mass of the W comes up with a smaller incident than actually the direct measurement. So that's a very good motivation to try to improve on that. The standard uh, approach is to fit the transverse momentum of the uh, lepton or the transverse mass, which is illustrated here um, for the transverse um, momentum of the lepton that nicely shows the uh, Jacobian peak. And the first measurement at the LHC was done by ATLAS. The total uncertainty is about 19 MeV which is dominated by the PDF uncertainties and the precision to model the transverse momentum of the boson. And its, it's precision is comparable to what is uh, currently the best result uh, coming from the Tevatron. Um, we have a new measurement of the W mass from LHCB uh, that is using the muon events. Um, so W going to mu neutrino. It's not using still the full uh, run to data, so it's only one third. And the a procedure to extract the W mass is to use um, a fit of the charge over PT distributions illustrated in this plot. 
uh, simultaneously with a five star variable for the Z events to constrain some of the uncertainties in situ. And the, the, the result uh, shown here compared also to the previous measurement is in this figure. The total uncertainty is about 32 MeV. Uh, so this is a slightly larger uncertainty than what uh, um, is measured at ATLAS at and uh, at Tevatron. However, just uh, bear in mind that this is really using a slightly different phase space. So in the future combinations, when ATLAS um, LHC and Tevatron uh, combination is made, um, th this information can be used to actually constrain the PDFs and possibly narrow down the uncertainty on the WMAS measurement. Uh, the expected LHCB precision on the WMAS using the full run to data set is about, is slightly below uh, 20 MeV. Um, one word about other measurements of the W process uh, at the Tevatron. So D0 has a new measurement of um, the PT uh, of the W, of the transverse momentum of the W using the hadronic recoil. And this is actually the first measurement that uses the full run to Tevatron data. And that's uh, quite interesting because it provides additional information for evaluating resumation calculations for the W boson when uh, the production is dominated by Volans quark because the LAC uh, the uh, prediction also involves um, S quarks. And here you can see comparison of the hadronic recall variables with different predictions on different uh, PTA tunes that are actually used um, at the, the LHC uh, by some experiments. And you see some tensions here. So this measurement can be used to uh, possibly improve on the modeling of the W process. Um, on the other hand, CDF has measured a charge lepton asymmetry, which is shown here, uh, that is sensitive to the uh, ratio of the D over U valence quark. So the, you see that modeling is quite good, but um, also when included in the global PDF fits, this can help uh, to constrain the ratios of the valence quark of the D over U in the PDF extraction. Now let me move to the... Um, to some section of the talk which discusses the decays of the W and Z boson. Uh, so the first topic is about the resolved tension in W decays, uh, because in standard model, um, there all the um, charge lepton uh, coupled to the W boson uh, with the same branching ratio, and then a lap actually seen a slight discrepancy about 2.6 sigma between the tau decays and uh, E and mu decays. So Atlas has made a measurement using W decays in TT bar events using um, Templates. So we, uh, Atlas classified the muons coming from the prompt decays, tau leptons, and hadron decays, and uh, made a template fit to the distributions of the impact parameter of the tracks, which shows uh, which can discriminate discriminate between these uh, three categories, and made a um, measurement of the ratio of the uh, W decay to tau and mu, which is very well compatible with one within uh, the uncertainty. The measurement, as you can see here, is about two times more precise than uh, the lab and is in agreement with the standard model. Um, CMS has also explored the branching fractions of the Ws, and they used a, a wealth of different data, TT bar, TW, WW, and W plus jets, uh, to measure um, the branching fractions of the Ws. They Instead of using the uh, D0 distribution, they used the trailing PT of the leptons in the dilepton events. And they extracted the branching fractions of W going to electrons, muons, and tau. This is summarized in, in, in the plot here on the bottom. Also uh, calculated ratios and um, extracted the total branching to, to all the leptons. And if you concentrate on this uh, table that compares the CMS results and the lab, you can see that while the systematic uncertainty is about similar, the statistic here uh, is the big gain because it is a um, factor of three to 10 um, uh, more precise than lab. The lepton universality can also be uh, tested in high mass to Lian. This was done by CMS, looking again at the forward backward asymmetry for high mass uh, events. Uh, the asymmetry at high mass is actually positive, and this is due to the interference between the uh, photons and the Z bosons. Uh, that's shown here, the agreement between the data and the prediction is uh, quite good, and the limits can be used uh, to set on BSM physics. And uh, the lepton of um, universality is tested by plotting the difference between the forward-backward asymmetry for electrons and muon. And you see that within 2.4 sigma, they are um, compatible. Now, go, uh, going from the W to Z, uh, CMS has measured for, uh, for the first time at Hadron Collider the invisible width 
uh, of the Z boson uh, by looking into EE to jets, mu mu to jets, and missing ET plus jet events uh, illustrated in, here in this plot. And the ratio of the cross section was interpreted interpreted as the Z invisible width. The summary is shown in this plot. Um, the CMS result is in precision. Uh, actually compatible with uh, the precision that was coming from the left uh, combination, which is, which is very interesting. Um, so that uh, brings me to the second topic. So that's the diboson and triboson measurement. You can see a summary of the different diboson and triboson measurement from Atlas and CMS in this table. The blue here uh, is the measurement done in 13 TV. Uh, the yellow is the, the, the measurements that are still made with a lower energy. So for the diboson measurements, um, the mostly uh, all the uh, most uh, all of the processes ha has been done at 13 TV, while still the full run to data, data set is being processed for some of the uh, channels. Um, we can say that by now the data is so large that the data set is so large that the, um, these diboson measurements are um, not limited by statistics but uh, by systematics. And in general, um, there is a good agreement between the state of the art uh, theoretical calculation. And you can see um, Atlas and CMS summaries uh, plots like this. So this is a summary plot uh, showing the difference between uh, measured and um, predicted cross sections for the diboson processes. For the tribosons, this, these are very low cross sections. So we have to use hadronic decays. And we have, as I will uh, detail a bit more, uh, a first observation of the three massive gauge boson processes, but you can also see that some of the um, final states uh, have not yet been measured. Uh, just one word about the interpretation of the measurements. Essentially, all the papers that come from the diboson, triboson, and VBS, um, they compare to the, um, the predictions, but they also try to characterize the possible deviation in terms of uh, BSM physics. So we are using the uh, standard model effective field theory, which enhances the standard model Lagrangian by additional operate operators. So this is an expansion in terms of scale of new physics, uh, one of the lambda. And typically in each of the paper, we constrain a couple of um, um, Wilson coefficients or the parameters standing in front of these operators. Obviously on the long term, at the end of round three, we will try to combine all our um, information that we, uh, that we collected. And there were first attempts of the global um, EFT interpretations using the dimension six operators by Atlas, uh, combining WWWZ for lepton and electrovic JJ measurements, or uh, Higgs to WW and WW process. Um, so of course, this will have to continue uh, this effort in the future. Uh, VBS processes, which are the processes where the boson is emitted from the initial state quark and then uh, scatter uh, the, the boson scatter of each other. They are excellent uh, laboratory to to, um, to probe this uh, electroweak symmetry breaking because there is a lot of cancellation between the uh, diagrams um, involving triple gauge boson and quartic gauge boson couplings, and in certain diagrams also the Higgs. And so when one adds the dimension eight operators, this will modify the WWJJ production. We had the anomalous uh, quartic gauge coupling leading to a unitarity violation. So right now experiments have to really um, agree on using the same unitarization procedures uh, so that we can compare the results and uh, be able to reinterpret or, and combine them in the future. So I will just detail a few measurements that were done. Um, first of them is W gamma measurement, which is a full run to measurement uh, done by CMS. Um, so it's an inclusive and differential cross section. Here you, said, you see a differential cross section of the PT of the photon. An interesting um, observable here is the uh, difference between the rapidity of the lepton and the gamma, which shows a dip in the middle, and this is called uh, radiation zero. Uh, that is due to the uh, destructive interference of the leading order diagrams, and this can be used to, um, to explore the BSM physics. And also, they included um, a measurement of the phi variable in the W gamma rest frame, which also is, uh, enhances the sensitivity to EFT constraints. So this is related to the enhancement of the interference between the standard model and the BSM in differential distributions, while um, uh, this interference is zero for um, inclusive and integrated observables. Um, ATLAS uh, has made a very precise measurement of the WW production with at least one jet. 
and uh, this is probing basically the um, um, the production up to so far unexplored, unexplored phase spaces up to five jets, which you can see here on the bottom. Um, one can see that the next to leading uh, calculation and next to next to leading. Uh, uh, or the calculation are in good agreement, and even the high multiplicity events can be described uh, extremely precisely. Um, Atlas also made a measurement of the four lepton production. So this is a, a rather complex measurement that probes the invariant mass of the four leptons. So it focuses on the region of where the Z goes to four leptons, Higgs goes to four leptons. There is on-shell production of ZZ, but also the off-shell production. Um, it's a precise measurement involving many variables, including the angular coefficient, uh, sorry, angular distributions. And by now, it's still statistically remitted, so it will be in, improved uh, with run three. Um, regarding the WZ, um, CMS has made an improved measurement using the full run two, and it measures the inclusive distribution, uh, sorry, inclusive cross section as well as uh, differential distribution, but also for the first time. There's an extraction of the polarization of the single boson uh, by fitting an angular distribution of the W uh, boson in these events. And you can see here uh, the polarization uh, uh, contour. So this is the transverse polarization versus the longitudinal polarization with the best fit and uh, the um, prediction from the standard model. Uh, there is still a good agreement uh, between the standard model and uh, the, the observation. Now let me move to the vector boson scattering. So this is the process where the boson is uh, emitted from the initial state quark. And um, we have the two forward jets used as a tagging jets to select these events. The flagship process for the VBS was for a very long time the same sign WW uh, production because that the same sign requirement helps to suppress a lot of background. It has been observed uh, by both Atlas and CMS as well as the WZ production. Uh, when comparing this with uh, the theoretic prediction, we can say that there's a good agreement uh, with the next to leading uh, order theory that includes both the electroweak and the QCD contribution. The update uh, on this measurement is that CMS is a new uh, measurement using full run two that uh, produces the differential distribution here as a function, for example, as, as MNJJ, but they also uh, extracted the polarization fraction of the single boson, so WL, WX, with a significance of 2.3 sigma. And um, there are also studies how this process will be um, performed at high luminosity LHC, and uh, we should be able to claim an evidence of the uh, two bosons being longitudinally polarized. Um, Going to the opposite sign, W plus W minus, uh, there's a recent uh, publication from CMS uh, that, that is much more complicated than the W plus the, to the same sign, but they were able to also claim uh, the observation by using a, a deep neural network and using many different variables exploiting the kinematics of the, of the process. Another w, uh, VBS process is Z, Z gamma that can be measured when um, the Z goes to the visible particles, so the two uh, leptons. So ATLAS is a measurement, differential measurement as a function of the invariant mass, and CMS has actually a double differential measurement in the MJJ and also the delta eta. And when one looks at events when the Z goes to neutrino, so um, basically events gamma plus uh, missing ET, ATLAS um, has a first observation of this process, and um, there it, it's interpreted um, to put limits on the branching ratio of Higgs to invisible particles. So this is like diagrams like this, and also it provides the best limits of the Higgs branching uh, branching to the uh, dark photons um, using uh, the Z uh, gamma when the Z goes to to neutrinos. Um, the gamma, the boson boson scattering can also be done in photon induced processes that actually don't involve the forward jets. So th these are events where the photons are emitted from the two protons, and we are using the LHC basically as the photon photon collider. And Atlas has made a measurement of the photon induced production of the diboson, uh, selecting the events with uh, the requirement of zero tracks associated with the interaction vertex. And uh, the proton-proton collisions are not the only way to study photon-photon-induced uh, processes. We have another measurement in lead-lead uh, that um, has an enhancement of these initial photons emissions 
An atlas is a measurement of the production of the light by light scattering. You can see here the differential distribution uh, where the cross section was measured uh, slight, with slight excess um, consistent within two sigma with the standard model. A comment about the photon induced processes. There is an ongoing effort in both Atlas and CMS to exploit these processes by actually also tagging the outgoing process, uh, the proton, sorry, um, by using the um, detectors installed very far from the interaction point, about 220 meters. So this is uh, still to come and it's gonna be interesting to see if this can be used to exploit the electroweak symmetry breaking them. And then now um, let me- um, so, um, have you, you have about five minutes left, okay? Perfect, thank you very much. The last topic of my talk is the triboson production. So let me flash two um, new measurements. Um, CMS has measured the production of the W gamma gamma and Z gamma gamma. So these are the processes that are displayed here, which are sensitive to the quartic uh, gauge coupling or in the uh, case of the Z Z gamma gamma to the anomalous um, quartic gauge coupling. Um, this is, um, still limited by the photon reconstruction and background uh, description and uh, the background hypothesis was uh, rejected with the 3.1 uh, sigma and 4.8 so slightly before uh, below the observation so it's going to be very interesting to explore this again with uh, the wealth of the run3 data that is coming and here um, let me um, flash the new measurement of the atlas um, that claims observation of the three massive gauge bosons for the first time at the LHC. So this is a measurement that actually um, selects events that comes from the different production mechanism. There's a QCD production, there is an electrovic uh, production due to triple gauge boson interaction, quartic gauge boson interaction, but also that it includes the association pro associated production of the W with the Higgs when the Higgs decays to, to the W. And this exploited the uh, leptonic and semi-leptonic decays, so the two and three lepton signal categories were included in the boosted decision tree to enhance the sensitivity. The cross-section was measured. The observed significance was about 8.2 sigma, so well above this uh, five sigma limit that we typically use for um, observation. The signal strength is slightly above one, and so there's about 2.4 sigma tension between the standard model and the observation. So again, this is gonna be very interesting in run three to see if this is a fluctuation in the data or uh, something fundamental uh, new. So let me summarize. Um, I talked about the extraction of electroweak precision um, measurements. So uh, there still the, the final results from run two are still coming using the full run two data. The dibosome cross sections have been measured in many final states and in many topologies. And there is in general a good agreement between the state of the art predictions Possibly uh, there are some improvements um, in the tails of the distributions like the um, number of jets or, or PT of the jets, et cetera. We have had um, a first observation of the three heavy gauge boson at the LHC, which was uh, quite an achievement because this process has very uh, um, low cross section. Many vector boson scattering and vector boson fusion uh, processes have been observed. But I, this will, uh, I mean, this program will still benefit from the around three and actually put the, even beyond of the high luminosity LHC. And so far, no significant deviation, as we all know, uh, was observed between uh, the data and the standard model. And we try to um, interpret potential deviation uh, by constraining electrovic, uh, uh, the effective field th theory operators that characterize, that should characterize the BSM uh, contributions in the measurements. And here we need to ensure that we publish our data in a format that will allow comparison, combination, and future reinterpretation. So thanks very much for your attention. Thank you very much for that uh, really uh, amazing summary. I was astonished to see new results from the Tevatron, I must say. It's perhaps a warning for us at the, at the LHC that we'll still be uh, bringing results out 10, 20 years after whenever our final run is. Are there questions? I was, ah, oh, yes, Marco. Yes, I actually had a question on the on the very uh, first slide you showed. You mentioned that you use the uh, Z mass from from LEP uh, as as sort of the standard candle uh, uh, to to calibrate your Drell Yan against. 
Um, and I, I was just wondering uh, uh, what the precision of that is uh, of, of, the, of this whole process and, and, and will that be sufficient going forward uh, to the full uh, HL LHC regime and, and possibly further, how, how, how long is, is this sufficient or, or do we at some point hit uh, a limit and need, need to think of other ways? This is an interesting question. So I think at the moment, all our experimental resolutions are well above what um, the precision of the mass of the Z, uh, a determinant lab can kind of limit the, 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 the calibration of the object. I can say that there are ideas how to explore also the measurement of the mass of the Z um, at the LAT, um, at the Hadron-Hadron Collider. So here, of course, we will have to rely on other processes like um, production of the JPSI going to, to the lepton. So we will essentially calibrate, try to measure the mass of the Z with respect to the JPSI um, measurement. And the, it's a question whether this will, I think, I think this will not give, uh, or this will not uh, bypass the precision that uh, lab could uh, achieve for the measurement of the mass of the uh, Z boson. Uh, to, to answer the second part of the of your question, whether this will be sufficient uh, going forward to the high Lumia LAT, I don't really have the answer. Maybe some, someone else has. I can see Tanya has a hand up. Is it a, a reply to this discussion or a new topic? No, no, it's a new question. Sorry. Okay. Anyone else want to comment on the Z mass or should we move on? Okay, Tanya, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, uh, thanks for the talk. Can you go to slide six, please? <clears throat> yeah, that very naive question. <clears throat> Sorry, from the theory side. I mean, is there ever going to be a Tevatron LHC combination for this? Um, so there is an ongoing effort that is um, trying to combine the current Tevatron combination with the Atlas measurement. So this uh -huh. is currently ongoing. Mm -hmm. And obviously, um, once that's done, and also we have results from other LHC experiments, there will be, I think, second round of um, other combination. But yes, the, the effort is there. Mm, okay. I mean, then it would be obviously interesting to see what's happening with the CMS uh, value, which is much higher if I... I know, sorry, it's the errors. Okay, sorry, forget it. Okay, thank that's you. Yeah, yeah, forget it. I read it wrong. Thanks. It's okay. Okay, we have time for another one or two questions. I was interested on, on slide 13. Um, obviously, ooh, did I mean 13? Yes, yes. Um, do, you, do you have any, is this really very statistics limited, entirely statistics limited, or what are the systematic uncertainties like at the moment? Mm. I think this is still statistically limited, and you can also see it uh, in the tails of the distribution that uh, that is scattering around. So, yeah, I think this this measurement will also benefit uh, to be done with run three. Okay, is that a new question, Tanya, or you just still have your hand up? Sorry, yes, yes, yes. First first day after break, you know. Yeah, it's been a while since we were all zooming. Um, Another question, Aldrich, uh, you, I mean, obviously run three is going to bring a lot more statistics, but also a slightly different center of mass energy. Are there any cross-section measurements or other measurements you think we should be paying particular attention to with, with the new center of mass energy? Um, so, I mean, the, the earlier years of run three, uh, when the increase in the uh, energy is small, I, I don't think we will gain much, right? Uh, because the, the data sample and also the understanding of the um, uh, CP recommendations, the performance recommendation will not be great. So I think for at least one or two years, uh, there will not be um, too much um, that we cannot expect too much, perhaps some ratios of the cross sections between the WZ and the top uh, that cancel some of the um, experimental uncertainties. Uh, for the full run two plus run three data set, I think we will have to really, or that there will be then the opportunity to look into the tri-boson measurements and VBS and VBF processes where we'll have much more statistics or slightly more statistics to explore these uh, rare processes. Okay. 
think thanks so i, I noticed in the chat uh marco uh do you want to um give us some guidance for for the photo i'm just saying it now i don't want everyone to leave as soon as i thank aldrich again for his talk so um Maybe I'll do that anyway, but don't all run away because they're going to try and take a first conference uh, photograph. So thank you again for that presentation. Indeed, thanks to all three speakers, uh, especially for running so beautifully to time for this first session. We've set, we've set the bar high, I think. So thanks very much and congratulations. Yeah, th thanks also to to you, Pippa, for for sharing uh, and indeed to, to everyone for for sticking to time that that, that was uh... A great start, and and uh, I, I hope we can we can continue in a similar way. So um, conference photos are, are always a bit tricky uh, uh, in in virtual conferences, but I, I would just uh, ask everyone uh, who wants to to switch on their camera, and uh, we'll uh, take a, a few snapshots and 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 then do something with those uh, and with. Uh, others that that will take throughout uh, the, the week because of course every not everyone is uh is around this morning so we're all supposed to say higgs or something to get some smiles on faces <laughs> yeah well, that's, say higgs. That's, that's a good idea that's a good idea let's let's try that but we'll we'll, we'll have to do it uh, um uh, a few times uh, so, so we'll have to go through a few particles there because uh, uh, <laughs> uh, there are several screens around but let's 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 get going okay so let's start with higgs Thanks. All right, looking great. Uh, keep smiling. Excellent. Okay, I think I've captured everyone who's got their camera on. Let's take another one. All right. Thanks very much. Don't want to take uh, any more time from your coffee break, and we'll continue in half an hour. Bye everyone, the Zoom wave. <laughs>